kick off rack number two. Well, he gave him a wallop, and he hasn't come up at all well. There's nothing worse than coming up dry. It very, very rarely happens on this match TV table. Very rarely does a wing ball not go in. He gave it a wallop. And I really don't think there's any need for that. I just don't see the point. When when you saw what Earl Strickland did last night, um, and God knows why Earl Strickland changed his break today, because uh, what was the point? I mean, last last night it was going so well, and now he changes it slightly and wasn't getting such a good result. Steve, even our first match out here on the TV table, Alex Pagulian was barely breaking the balls hard enough to get the, the cluster moving, and the wing ball was flying in. I mean, obviously, the... The players are not always watching the TV table like we are, but surely they have uh, spies, so to speak. There's, there's plenty of knowledgeable players in the crowd. I mean, everybody plays the game to some degree in Taiwan, so somebody would, you would have thought would have got a message to Chow that uh, there's no need to play. But perhaps they just don't like breaking soft because it's not something they're used to. So the jump cue employed very early. Obviously, he's not just trying to hit this, he's trying to pot it. What a shot. I've seen him so many times already bring that short cue out, and I've yet to see him fail. Really did strike that one well. I mean, when you're hitting down on the ball like that, it's very easy to put a bit of unwanted spin on the ball. It just squirts the ball off very quickly to one side or the other. Wow, clever the queuing there. Now he's got another shot where he's jacking up. And this is even harder to cut this two in. He may not even play it. Hard to say. Oh, that's a superb shot. It really is. Unfortunately, he couldn't really concentrate too much on positional play there, but what a great pot. Would he dare to play the three ball slow down the rail and try and hide in behind the five. One thing about it though, Steve, playing that jump shot, that's going to be sending notes over for Majid. He knows if he's going to try and lock him up, it's going to have to be a good one. Yes, it wasn't the best safety in the world from Iran, even though he did snooker his opponent. It's not just good enough to snooker him, you've got to get him in a, a safe when you're snookering the players of this calibre. Is he going to go for this? Oh, it's a risky shot. What else can he do? Hit it sort of half ball, try and get behind the nine or back behind the, the four and the five. He's laid the cut down the rail, committed himself fully. Let's see if he's paid the price. Well, that couldn't really have gone in the worst position, I would have thought. Difficult to see from the overhead here. Just came away from the cushion too much this time. Difficult to see from where this three ball ended up. Whether he can cut it back into the center. If he can't, the cut into the corner may be restricted because of the size of the middle pocket. It would be an unfortunate <laughs> position for Imran to find himself in not being left a shot with this. I think he can just cut it in and hit the, the bump. That's what he's hoping to do. Yes, he's just seeing exactly the line, of the path of the cue ball. The, the, he's just going to catch the jaw, the point. He's got to concentrate so much on the pot, he must get position as well. It's a superb strike. Great shot from Imran Majid there. Willing that cue ball to stop. He's nicely on the four. Marvellous shot there. So close to scratching again. Now, top spin between the nine and eight ball, or draw the ball across the table. To take the nine and eight ball out of the, the equation wrong with the top spin shot with a bit of side missing the eight by a fraction mm -hmm. 
These two players looking to book a place into the last eight and with it a date against Canada's Alex Pagulayan. Oh, that's not the best shot that Imran's played. Not a good time to be betwixt and between. I assume he played for the other side of this six ball into the right hand pocket and failed to hit it hard enough. He may have been trying to draw the ball up with more spin and quit on it a bit, but now even if he pots the six, he's not too sure where the balls are going to end up. Probably as good as he could have done there. He knew he was cannoning into the seven and he's left it on, albeit it's not a sitter. Just about holding himself together here. Just avoided snooping himself on the nine. And it looks like he survived an early scare. One all, and Imran's got the break back. Well, let's pick up the action now. Start of the 11th rack. Chow has won eight racks in a row. He leads 9-1. former world champion has been in devastating form. Well, has he got a path through? <coughs> Looks like he has. A bit fortunate if he has got a shot. Uh, Lost the white ball a fraction. The one ball was going down the table, hit the point of the middle pocket and came back into this area. It certainly doesn't look like a full pocket, Steve. The bottom half. He's just having a look to see where to lay the cue ball to get on the two, so he's already given himself the one. Yeah, the one's a certainty for me. It doesn't look... Once he's successfully negotiated this first shot, no problems. Imran must be wondering if he's going to get another chance in this match. Just not quite certain. The shot and the position. Play a very delicate shot here as well. A very low contact on the cue ball, putting maximum backspin on with very little power. Drawing the cue ball across the table without making the cue ball go too far across the table. And the ball's lined up like soldiers once again. Green six hanging over the middle center pocket. And after the excitement of the previous match, the crowd being entertained in a different way here by the hero. Every match of nine ball Paul has a different story. Back in the UK, this isn't the story we would have liked to have seen. But even if Imran does bomb out here, I think we'll be seeing more of him on the television phases of tournaments. And the experience is always good. Well, I'm not sure anybody could have come up against Chow in this form and walked away a winner. The nine down. Well, 
he's lost the cue ball there. But the three balls just lined up perfectly. <laughs> One in the in the centre, blue two in the Sail down, please. corner. The three going nowhere. Ideally placed, not many balls left on the table. You need a bit of luck sometimes at this game. It hasn't really gone in Ren's way. Anything that has been going, as I suppose, helped Chao Fong Pang. He's had a name change since he won the last tournament. When he, when he won it in Cardiff, he was called Fong Pang Chao, Jim. Um, it's all, all reversed, isn't it? Yes, over here, their surname comes first. To those that may be unfamiliar, this is the same man. A stroll in the park this has been for him. Yes, and well, for him, ran a letdown. I'm sure he'd been firing himself up all day for the excitement of a, a match against a player of this calibre on his home soil, thinking what could have been. And you just don't know, do you? Whatever's going to happen at this game, you've got to be prepared for all the knocks and come back for more punishment next time. Nothing you can do when you're sitting in your chair. You just have to swallow. Take the punishment and come back tomorrow. But Fong Pang Chao has really dished it out today. And quite rightly, the crowd going absolutely mad.